Psalms, chapter number 32, verse number 8, from the New International Version of the Bible. And it simply reads as follows. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments, on today, I want to dialogue with you from the subject, the liberation of confession. Amen. The liberation of confession. Free yourself. Liberation is the process of being freed from imprisonment. Being freed from slavery or being freed from oppression. Understand on today that liberation involves recognizing that God not only frees us from the burden of sin, but he also liberates us from the self-imposed bondage that we may have placed upon ourselves because of sin. In our journey through the struggles of life and the challenges that we face day in and day out, it is important for us to acknowledge that God not only sets us free from the consequences of our own sin, but he has also released us from the limitations that we have imposed on ourselves by entertaining sin and engaging in it. The Bible teaches us, Sister Sharon, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This means, my brothers and my sisters, that we are all destined to face the consequences of sin. The consequence, my brothers and my sisters, is death. See, when we consider the repercussions of sin, we come to understand that we all find ourselves in the same situation. We all got the same issue. And what this means, Reverend Slater, is that in this church and in every church, there are no big eyes and no little youths. Because we are all in need of the same thing. I don't care what your title is. I don't care how long you've been in the church. We are all in need of an all-sufficient Savior that can save us from our sins. Understand, Brother Woodard, when we approach Jesus, we must come to him in faith. We understand that faith Elder Kill is the substance of things hopeful. And the evidence of things unseen. We must come to God by faith. And we must give God some praise on today. Because see, it is God who initiated our faith. I should have had one of three people say yeah. It is God <laughs> who initiates 
that faith. And he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And not only that, he has enlightened our minds. He is the one who enlightened our minds so we can make a conscious decision yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. to choose yes. life in him. Amen. See, when we make Jesus our choice, HMBC, something remarkable occurs in our life. See, we begin to see ourselves as we really are. When we stand in comparison next to an all-sufficient Savior, we become acutely aware of our flaws and imperfections when we are standing next to Jesus the Christ. You see, once we acknowledge the Lord as our Savior, we confess our sins. When we confess our sins, for those who don't know, we agree with God that we are wrong. Agree with God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we confess our sin, but after that we repent of our sins. Yeah. See, we have to acknowledge them before we turn from them. And once we confess, and once we repent, our faith begins to take root. And it begins to grow. And through this process, we experience liberation. We become overcomers by recognizing our own shortcomings, confessing our sins regularly, and turning from them. In this state, my brothers and my sisters, we find liberation. We find freedom All right. in knowing that God accepts us for who we are. I still got more shouts than that. God accepts us for who we are and he is willing to lead us in spite of ourselves. Not only is he willing to lead us, he's willing to instruct us. Turn the text. <laughs> teach us and to guide us. Our mental and spiritual liberation lies in acknowledging our true self. Well. Confessing our sins to God yes. and embracing the faith that we have in Jesus the Christ. Yes. Talk, Talk. What we have acknowledged our true self, confess our sins to God, and embrace faith in Jesus Christ, we begin to experience what we call transformation. Come on now. Mm. We experience God's loving transformation in our lives. This transformation comes from the power of God's love. And the power of his forgiveness. Uh -huh. We are no longer bound to the chains of sin. Uh -huh. And we're no longer bound to those struggles. Yeah. Because by faith, uh -huh. God is now leading us. Uh -huh. Instead, we are set free to live a life purpose. Amen. Amen. And not only do we now have purpose, but MIT really, we our lives have meaning since Jesus has come in to our hearts. Yeah. Not only has he come into our hearts, but we have received the gift of eternal life. This eternal life, my brothers and my sisters, came through what Jesus went through. Yeah. 
when he paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. And I want you to understand on today that this gift is available to all who believe and accept him as Lord and Savior. I want you to understand this. <coughs> this transformation. Are y'all listen to me? This transformation, Deacon the Simpson, is not just a one-time event. Amen. But it is an ongoing process. As we continue to walk with Christ, we grow in our relationship with him and we grow in our relationship with one another. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He aids us or he helps us to overcome the temptations and the challenges that come our way through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are empowered to live a life that reflects God's love, God's grace, and His righteousness. The songwriter said, We come to stop by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. He has never failed us yet. So, my brothers and my sisters, there have been some struggles, but we've come this far and we're going to progress by our faith. Yeah. There have been some sickness and there have been some distress so far in 2024, but we've come this far and we're going to experience a divine disruption by our faith. Yeah. We have had some disagreements and we have experienced some misdirection, but we've come this far. And we're going to dwell together in unity by our faith. There have been some backstabbers. And there have been some haters along the way. But we've come this far. And we're going to overcome negativity by our faith. Due to the fact that we've come such a long way, there's no retreat. And there's no surrender. Due to the fact that God has blessed us beyond measures, we should be willing to not turn back to the old sex. When the folk rub us the wrong way. Due to the fact that we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, we should be appreciative for what God has done for us. And it should manifest itself by genuine worship. Due to the fact, my brothers and my sisters, that we've been liberated through our confession of faith. We have to understand and equip ourselves to acknowledge who God really is day in and day out. We have to be willing to share our testimonies yeah. and what we've been through with one another. Yeah. The song that says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future. And life is worth living even when I don't know what tomorrow might be because he lives. Tell the stand up to the HMBC. Doors are going to be opened because he lives. Restoration and reconciliation will be the new norm for our families and our churches because he lives. There's a new organic and authentic growth in our fellowship because he lives. And life is worth living. Just because our all-sufficient Savior, he lives. The overall thing. The Psalm 32 is about the blessing, blessings of forgiveness and the joy that comes from confessing sin and receiving God's mercy. Here, 
David emphasizes the importance of confession, yeah. repentance, and the restoration of one's relationship with God. Well, I'm going to say that again. It's important for us to confess, yes. to repent, and to make sure that we are engaging in restoration when it comes to our relationship with God. It's important for us to recognize that we that there will be moments when we fall short of God's standards. But the Apostle Paul reminds us that everyone has sinned and fall short of God's glory. When we fall short, and I want you to listen to me clearly, when we do fall short, it is crucial that we set aside our pride. My God. Amen. Help us, Lord Jesus. And we let go of our egos. Amen. And we confess our wrongdoings to God. Amen. And it's more important, not only do we confess our wrongdoings to God, but it is our mandate as believers to turn from that wrongdoing. Yes. And turn to him. Yes. We are to embrace God. Yes. Somebody say embrace. embrace. We are to embrace God embrace. in all humility. Yes. That's right. And accept the restoration he offers through his love, through his grace, yes. through his mercy, and on his terms, yes. not our terms. The psalmist also reflects on the freedom and the peace that comes from acknowledging and turning away from sin. Don't you find life just a little more peaceful? When you're not engaging in secret sin, I'm going to say it I'm going to say it It might be a little bit more peaceful. When you're not engaging in secret sin, and there's a peace and acknowledging that we are going the way that God wants us to go and doing what God wants us to do. Amen. Psalm 32 highlights the transformative power of God's grace and the intimate connection between a repentant heart and a loving, kind Savior. All right. See, there's a connection. Yes, it is. Your repentance leads to a connection. Amen. Somebody need to write that down. Amen. In our text for today, it focuses on the guidance and instruction that God provides to those who have acknowledged and turned from their sins and made Him their choice. Hallelujah. The thing of this verse centers around, centers around listening to God's voice, obeying his guidance, and finding joy and contentment in following his ways. Amen. Let me throw this in parenthetically. When we find that place of peace, because we have acknowledged who God is, that place of peace becomes a place where we can clearly hear God's voice. Amen. Amen. Right. It's easier to hear God's voice God. in the yeah. peace than it is to hear God's voice in the midst of chaos. Amen. And God brings peace and sin us is in chaos. But we must remember that it is key not only to hear God's voice, 
but to do what God said to do. Amen. 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 And there's a joy and there is a contentment even in times of struggle and despair when you are following his ways. Yes. It is crucial that we acknowledge God and place our trust in him. Yes, yes. Trust in the Lord yes, yes, yes. with all. all our heart. Not some of it. All, all our heart. All. Yes. And lean not unto our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and allow him to direct our paths. See, we must be attentive to God's guidance as we navigate life. We must be attentive to God's guidance when we are serving him. We must remember, David, that he is the master. Tell your neighbor, he is the master. I know it's like history month that we don't want to say it, but we are the slaves. He is the master, and we are the slaves, and the slaves do what the master said do. But not only should we hear God's voice, we must have a heart to obey him regardless of how we feel and regardless of what is going on in our lives. We should find joy and contentment in fulfilling the call that God has placed on our lives. And it is imperative that we focus on our call mm -hmm. and not somebody else's call. Amen. Amen. There's only enough time, Sister Monique, for me to do what I'm supposed to do. Amen. I can't be trying to be somebody else when God has called me to be me. Lastly, it is of great importance as believers, and we've said this before, but I'm going to say it one more time, that we trust God. And not only must we trust God, we must be receptive to his instructions and his direction. Because check this out, his instructions and his direction are for our good. Yes. Yes. The psalmist encourages believers to seek a close relationship with God. HMBC and those under the sound of my voice, I am encouraging you today, no matter what's going on in your world, to seek a closer walk Amen. with God. And not only must you seek a closer walk with God, you must heed to his counsel and rejoice in his unfailing love and his faithfulness. Yes. So all this said, what fundamental truths should we grasp about God when we see ourselves for who we really are? Ask for forgiveness yeah. for our transgressions yeah. and seek to elevate mm -hmm. to a higher plane. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, as we seek to elevate, I want you to understand it is God who instructs. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the text. God promises to instruct us so I want us to understand that being instructed by God implies receiving specific guidance, receiving specific directions and commands from God. This lets us know that God will provide very clear and specific 
instructions. When it, when it comes to the paths we must take. And God's instructions give us practical guidance for making right choices and right decisions. Point number one, it is God who instructs. But not only does God instruct, as we seek to grow, our hearts must be positioned naturally and spiritually toward our God who teaches. So not, not only does God instruct, God teaches. There's a difference, Deacon Woods, between God instructing and God teaching. God has promised that he would teach us in the way we should go. Amen. Being taught emphasizes, emphasizes a broader aspect of education or enlightenment. It suggests that God will impart wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in a more general sense, helping us to grow spiritually and gain insight into what he expects us to do and what he don't want us to do. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. God's teachings, Brother Todd, encompass a deeper understanding of his character, yeah. principles, yes. and his purpose. Yeah. Point number one, it is God who instructs. Uh -huh. Point number two, it is God who Amen. But last but not least, once we understand that it's God who instructs, it's God who teaches. But lastly, as we seek to possess the land, uh -huh. we must grasp that it is God who guides. Hallelujah. But my Bible reads, I understand that it doesn't mention that God guides. Amen. But as we observe, <laughs> when we observe, because our mandate is to observe the text, but when we observe what the psalmist is saying, we come to the conclusion. Hallelujah. From our observations. Yes. That the concept of being guided, and y'all with me, mm -hmm. it aligns with God's promise to instruct uh -huh. and to teach. Yes, Hallelujah. Being guided implies God's ongoing presence and direction. In our lives. Hallelujah. It suggests that God will guide us and lead us step by step. Amen. God will provide discernment yeah. and He makes His presence known as we navigate the ups and downs that we face in life. Yes, sir. Yes. God's guidance. Involves his continuous involvement mm -hmm. in leading us and offering us counsel along life's narrow way. So, point number one it is God who instructs. Point number two it is God who teaches. And point number three, it is God who guides. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, as we embrace the liberation of confession, we understand that God instructs, God teaches, and he guides. When we find ourselves 
in the midst of problematic times yeah. and tricky situations. Uh -huh. We understand God instructs, God teaches, yeah. and He guides. Mm -hmm. HMBC, I just want you to hear what I'm saying for today. No matter what you are going through, I want you to hold to the fact yes. that God instructs, yes. God teaches, yes. and He guides. Yes. The software says uh -huh. we are often <laughs> tossed and driven yes. on the restless, on the restless <laughs> sea of time, uh -huh. somber skies, uh -huh. and a howling tempest yes. of succeed. A bright sunshine in the land, a perfect day when the mist has rolled away. We will understand it better by and by. In life, there will be conflicts, but there's a brightness on the other side of the tempest. The process. That leads to our purpose is not going to be easy, but there's brightness on the other side of the tempest. We will be misunderstood, misrepresented, and mistreated, but there's brightness on the other side of the tempest. Challenges that seem too impossible to overcome. Adversity will test the very fabric of our character. The struggles that we endure will build the strength that we need for tomorrow. We must understand that there is brightness on the other side of the tempest. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus knows all about our struggles. He who God till the day is done. They're not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. My brothers and my sisters, trust God in the midst of your trials and temptation. See, our commission is to comply with God's decrees and God's direction. Have a mind to confess and a heart to repent. Our commission is to comply with God's decrees and His direction. Allow God to instruct, to teach, and to guide. Our commission is to comply with God's decrees and God's direction. The songwriter said, lead me, guide me along life's narrow way. For if you leave me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Somebody say, lead me. Oh, Lord, lead me. But life seems overwhelming as the Lord to take the lead when the odds are stacked against us ask the Lord to take the lead when life's turbulence makes ministry uneasy ask the Lord to take the lead when bumps in the road cause us to start losing control when challenges seem too great to overcome when we feel surrounded the opposition, the uncertainty, shake our foundation. With setbacks, test our resilience. With chaos, threatens to consume us. With adversity, cast a shadow over our past. My brothers and my sisters, ask the Lord to take the lead. You see, the songwriter said again. Just ask the Savior to help you to comfort, to strengthen, and to keep you. He is willing, my God is willing, to aid you. He will carry you through. So when darkness seems close, 
Remember, God comforts, He strengthens, and He maintains. And if the adversary has you weary, God comforts, God strengthens, and He maintains. When your health begins to fail, remember, God comforts, God strengthens, and He maintains. Sometimes we'll get agitated. Sometimes. We'll feel manipulated. Sometimes we feel devastated. God comforts, God strengthens, and God maintains. When despair moves in the distance, when challenges cause us to get weak, when our strength begins to falter, remember God comforts. God strengthens and He maintains. When frustration starts to cloud our minds, when betrayal leaves us feeling lost, when sorrow threatens to consume our spirits, remember God comforts, God strengthens, and He maintains. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, for the glory. He said on our way, while we do his good will, he abides with us still. And to all who will trust and obey, isn't it good to know? No matter what we go through, we are going to trust our way through it. We, won't go, we are going to comply. To the word of God, we are going to trust our way through it. In times of struggle and in times of difficulty, we are going to trust our way through it. In times of sickness, in times of weakness, we are going to trust our way through it. When we stress, we are going to get tired. We are going to trust our way through it. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust him and obey him. Declare to yourself, I'm going to trust my way through it. We go to the church room. 